Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So I once did, or I think once, maybe twice did um, unboxing videos in the past. And you know, I'm, this isn't an unboxing channel, uh, but I buy and sell antique swords, as many of you know, and Eastern Antique Arms is my website, linked below here. And sometimes it just so happens that I procure a bunch of antique swords and sometimes other objects um, in one in one bunch and get them delivered and um, that's what I've got here a really heavy and um, large box full of um, swords mostly I think so I thought you might enjoy um, opening these up with me um, so I'll try and keep this as quick and brief as possible I'm not going to spend very much time lingering on any particular items that are coming out of the box because if they're interesting they'll be featured in future videos and possibly up for sale on my website um, uh, so anyway let's get unpacking this and let's have a see what's inside it so I have the box open and uh, I like to see bubble wrap in my boxes. What I do not like to see, I might have mentioned this before in videos, are these. I hate these. They're the bane of my life. They go everywhere. They're, ah, uh, I don't even know what they're called. Packing popcorn, polystyrene popcorn, something, I don't know. Um, packing chips, maybe. I just, I hate these things. Right, there are oh, lots of tightly packed things in here and they're all kind of a bit jammed in together or I might have to do this uh, I might have to do a bit of this off camera because I can't hold on let's oh. ah. it's stuck right uh... wow how did they even get this in here right hold on oh. Ah. Oh, I'm sure this is some wonderfully entertaining sound effects for you. I think what they've done is they've wrapped everything up and taped it to each other so it's one great congealed mass of swords. Um, right so I'm going to pull these out off camera and then um, unpack them a bit more on camera so see you in a second. Come out! <laughs> oh god these are... Oh. <laughs> I swear, I don't, I can't remember the last time I had this much trouble getting swords out of a box. They've wrapped each individual sword up and then wrapped it in pairs and then wrapped the pairs against the other pairs. And then they've jammed it in the box and like taped it all inside the box. It's, ah, I might actually have to cut the box apart to get it out. But I've managed to free, managed to liberate the first sword. So what is it? I imagine lots of you will recognize what this is, mmm, server sharpened, nice. Um, <clears throat> so it is an 1803 pattern sword by Wilkinson, hurrah. And um, I can see various markings on the blades nice and straight. Um, hilt's all nice and solid. I can see various markings on the back. Um, it's definitely marked to Wilkinson. I can't see a date at first sight. The blade, as you can see, looks brown. I imagine it has been stored probably on a wall or somewhere like that, some kind of display somewhere. Um, but once I clean that up a bit, some more markings might become apparent. Uh, you might or might not know my service sharpen, so almost certainly World War I um, service. And it's the service sharpening starts there and goes all the way up to the tip and the full surge is sharpened slightly as well. Very obviously, this is not a cutting sword, but they did bother to put edges on them anyway, just to, I don't know, make them slightly more effective in the thrust, I guess, or maybe make them less likely to get stuck in people when they get skewered. These were used in World War I. Lots of people think that cavalry wasn't a thing in World War I. It absolutely was. Cavalry saw action on the Western Front, both at the beginning and the end in particular. Um, but it also um, against the, the Turks, the Allies against the Turks, and of course T. Lawrence's Arab Revolt used lots of cavalry. So cavalry was used quite a lot in World War I, and in fact the first British kill of, um, of World War I was done with exactly, <laughs> not this sword, probably, uh, but with one of these swords, with the 1908 pattern. So the first 
German killed by a British person in um, World War One was done with a cavalry sword by an officer who was using a trooper's sword for some reason. Um, so yeah, there we go. Nice example of the type. I used to hate these and they've kind of grown on me um, like a disease. No, just cut. like once you understand exactly what they're for and the thinking behind them, I think for what they are, they're good. Just don't think of them how you might think of other types of sword. Um, they're very much built for a specific purpose. Right, let's try and get the next sword. So out. here we have the next sword is coming out, and this is a rather nice, oh, sharp, still well service sharpened. This is a rather nice and rather special piece because it is of one of Wilkinson's patent solid hilts. Um, and it dates to the 1860s from the serial number. All Wilkinson swords, as many of my viewers will know, have a serial number on the back and those uh, the records still exist for Wilkinson swords and sometimes they can identify the original purchaser of the sword, so the officer that carried it. This is an infantry officer's sword, um, 1845 pattern, with the solid rather than folding guard, which tends to be the case after 1860, and it has a full width tang. So the tang is visible at the front of the grip there, and the tang is as wide as the grip is, so super strong. That was an optional extra. That was something that you could pay for if you paid more for your sword when you were buying it from Wilkinson. Now that is a very nice example, and it's very interesting to me that it's been service sharpened, because that suggests that it may have been taken on campaign, so I will be sending off for the record to see if that will identify who the owner might have been. Um, there's no crest or any other initials or anything on the blade, so I can't tell from that. I will only know, um, the only way I can know who may have owned this is if the record records it. Um, interestingly, it's got two washers. I'll have a proper look at that later anyway, I won't dwell on this all now, um, but very nice patent hilt. So let's see, uh, let's see if I can manage to squeeze another sword out of here. They're coming out one by one with much wrestling. So here comes another one. Oh, it's a little one. Let's get the paper off. So they've wrapped them in paper inside the bubble wrap and uh, just cut that label off. So this is like a hanger sized version of a 1796 light cavalry sabre, isn't it? So here is a 1796 light cavalry sabre and here is this sword underneath. So the hilt's about the same size, but the blade is very deliberately, it's not shortened, it's very deliberately made both narrower and lighter. And these sorts of things were often carried by um, uh, infantry officers as, as sidearms, so that might be what it is, um, but I'll need to have a little bit more of a look at it. It's got some pitting, fairly sharp edge still, a little bit of movement in the guard. It's often the case with these swords because the leather washer goes, rots away a lot of the time, which loses the compression of the hilt. Right, on to the next. I've managed to get the whole wadge of bubble wrapped swords out now so that should make unpacking them whoa there goes the box that should make unpacking a little bit quicker now oh here we go right i'm sweating so it's the middle of winter here and uh, in fact it's been snowing in lots of england today and so we've got the heating turned up and uh doing this in my little study is absolutely baking me Right, let's have a look at this. So this is an 1845 pattern infantry officer's sword with the folding inner section to the guard, which is purely there to make them more comfortable and convenient to wear. This was dispensed with after about 1860 um, because it was fragile and these often got broken. Um, so let's have a look at this. Oh, so very nice. So a bit of pitting at the end. Now this is a pre-numbered Wilkinson. The brass scabbard indicates that it was worn by a someone of, with the rank of major or above, known as a field officer. But this is again service sharpened, and it's one of Wilkinson's earlier pieces. There's no identifying crests or initials on the blade, unfortunately, and because it's pre-numbered, there's no way of linking this to a specific officer, but it's a very nice example. Everything's solid and tight. Pre-numbered means that it dates to before 1854, 
Wilkinson Swords started making swords in around 1844, and in 1854 they started numbering their blades and recording um, all of them. This is not numbered, that means it dates to before 1854. The fact that it's service sharpened means that it probably saw um, service, or rather was carried, in one of the wars of the early 1850s, or potentially even the late 1840s. So the Sikh Wars, or um, perhaps, um, perhaps the Crimean War. The Crimean War is probably most likely, because it was such a big war, so many um, British officers, British soldiers were sent out to the Crimea. So this very likely was carried in the Crimean War, and a very nice sword it is too. Um, such a shame that it has no names or initials or anything to identify who the officer may have been, because in that period it's likely to have been someone very interesting. Right, let's get on to the next sword. So hot. Right, um, I spent all day being cold, commuting to and from work, and now I'm boiling hot. Right, um, so you might be able to guess what this sword might be, I'm guessing, from the shape of that blade and the shape of that tip. Let's have a look. And it's got a knuckle bow, flat guard, doesn't have any side extensions, so we're thinking it's probably a 1796. I think that's probably what it is. Oh, it's very pitted. Very, very pitted. Oh dear. And a pretty much a bare wooden grip. So let's just cut the thing off. Um, right, so this is what I would describe as relic. Oh, there we go, it's a 1796 in what I would describe as relic condition. Bare wooden grip, the leather has gone. Or is this actually a blucher? I think this is a blucher. I don't think this is a 1796. Yeah, that's not a 1796. That's actually a German, it's an early German blucher sable. Um, so the Germans in the Napoleonic era bought lots of 1796 sabres and were given lots of 1796 sabres by the British government so that the German states could continue fighting against Napoleon, leading to his uh, comment of calling Britain a nation of shopkeepers uh, because we sold stuff to all the people he was fighting against. Why not? Um, and they bought so many 1796s that the Germans ended up copying it and in fact they kept that model of sword, or at least swords inspired by it, the Blucher, uh, in service for a very long time. So this is a relic condition early Blucher sable, or Blucher sabre, um, I would say, rather than a British 1796. But the, as you can see the blade shape is almost identical. There are just small differences in the style of the the ear to the back strap there and the, the cross section of the guard and things like this that make me think this is German rather than British. Anyway, let's move on to the next sword. So hot. I feel like I'm in a sauna here. All right, get that knife in there. Again, if you're opening things with knives, obviously be careful, folks. Um, right, ah, this is another British Victorian infantry officer's sword with a scabbard. Very nice, let's just whip that um, label off. So this is a later, from the style of the hilt, you'll see it's kind of, <laughs> just pull the end of the wrapping off. Um, it's got a straighter grip, okay? Less of a, if we just pull one up for comparison. So you can see the difference in the shape of those grips. And yet on paper, Theoretically, these are the same model of sword, but this is a later period one. This is from the 1850s or around 1850. And this one is probably from uh, about 1870s, 1880s. Not all of the grips got like that. Some of them stayed the old style, but there was a tendency for infantry officers' swords and artillery officers' swords to get straighter, more like this with age. Ah, it's a Wilkinson and it is indeed from the 1880s and it has a lovely crest and initials on the blade. So coupled with the number on the back of this blade, serial number, and the fact that I have a crest and initials and a Latin motto, I should have no problem linking this. It's not been service sharpened, this one, as far as I can see at first sight, but I should have no problems linking that to an owner. Uh, and it's got a steel washer rather than a leather washer. That's an interesting optional extra. Anyway, that's a very nice sword. I look forward to researching that. Let's go on to the next one. Right, we're going into the final two swords now. It's the final countdown. Maybe that should be my Christmas song this year. 
Um, that should be more like New Year's really, shouldn't it, rather than... Europe, I think, was the band that sung that. I remember when Final Countdown came out. God, shows my age. Right, um, what is this? Oh, a rifles. Rifles officer's sword, there we go. Hold on, just snip the, snip the label off so that's not flapping around. No, sca no scabbard with this one, unfortunately. And so it's a bit like the one I've been cleaning up uh, to become a cutter. It's in um, not great condition. You can just about see the etching, but it's got quite a lot of rust on it. It's all solid though. This is gonna be another cutter candidate. Ooh. It has actually been pretty well service sharpened and the maker from the proof slug is Thurkle. So it's a good quality blade, good maker, one of the good London makers. Um, little bit of a bend in the blade, I can probably fix that. Um, but uh, yeah, a, a prime candidate for cleaning up. So that's a restorer piece. Right, let's go on to the final sword. Right, final one. And as you may have been able to tell, I've not been, um, acting i genuinely couldn't remember what was inside all of these packages um because i you know I, I i buy quite a lot of swords in auction from other dealers from collectors from estate sales where people have died this kind of stuff so sometimes i'm not entirely sure what's in the box when i'm opening it up which i have to be honest it's quite good fun and quite um quite exciting <laughs> right so this is a not very good condition on the grip anyway looks like french cavalry sword so, it, as you can see, it looks a bit like the American cavalry. Uh, it could be an American one, actually. Maybe it is American rather than... Ooh, it's got a scabbard. For some reason, I wasn't expecting that to have a scabbard in there. Oh, oh it is actually American. Wow, do you know what? I think this is the first US... Uh, so this is dated US 1865. So there you go. Um, so it's... Civil War era, if not necessarily actually a Civil War piece. Um, and I don't think I've ever owned a US Cavalry Sabre before. And this is a genuine, so it's got AGM marked on it. US 1865 AGM. I have no idea what AGM stands for. It's got the, what's called Montmorency um, secondary fuller towards the back edge. I'll do a video talking about this because I've actually been asked to talk about the US Cavalry Sabre quite a few times and here we go, I've actually got one in hand. Oh, Chelmsford, Massachusetts. C. Roby. So I know that that's a maker, I know that's a well-known American maker, C. Roby. So it's an American made, um, not service sharpened, although I know that a lot of Americans didn't bother sharpening their ser service sharpening their sabers for some reason, I don't know why. Um, but that's a nice saber, right, I'll do a video about that one. Made by C. Roby uh, of Chelmsford, Massachusetts. There we go. I think that might be one of the first American swords I've ever actually had here. Right, so I hope that was somewhat interesting, somewhat fun. I've got some really nice swords here to research and look into and Without any shadow of a doubt, some of these swords will be going up on my website over the coming weeks, shall we say. Um, cheers for watching and see you for the next video. <laughs> cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We have extra videos on Patreon and you can follow us on Facebook.